In the last video, we had an introduction to the use red user hook. In this video, let's take a look at our very first example. To keep things simple, we are again going to implement a counter. Doing so will also give you a chance to compare the code with the counter example that was implemented using the state hook earlier in the series. Alright, let's begin. We all know the basic requirements for a counter. We should be able to increment the count value, decrement the count value and reset the value back to zero. I'm going to start off by creating a new file called counter1.js. Within the file, I'm going to use the snippet rfce to create a functional component. For the JSX, first I'm going to create three buttons. One to increment, one to decrement, and one to reset the count value. Next, we need a count variable that can be displayed in the JSX. And this is where we need use reducer. There are a couple of things to understand, so let's break it down and go over each step. First step, we need to import use reducer from React. Now we can make use of it. Just like the other hooks, useReducer is also a function. We simply have to call it in our functional component. Now let's try to recollect the syntax. We learned that useReducer accepts two arguments. The first one is a reducer function and the second one is the initial state. But these are not defined yet. So for step two, let's define the initial state and the reducer function. I'm going to define them outside the component. First, the initial state. Our counter will start off with a value of zero. So the initial value, which is the initial state, is also going to be zero. Next, we define the reducer function. const reducer is equal to an arrow function. Again, we learned in the last video, a reducer function accepts two values and returns one value. The two values accepted are the current state and the action. These are the parameters to the reducer function. Now, I also mentioned that the reducer function returns one value, which is the new state. Just for the sake of understanding, I'm going to add the statement return new state. So the reducer function accepts the current state and returns the new state. But for this transition to happen, we need something. And that something is this action parameter. You can think of action as an instruction to the reducer function. Based on what the action specifies, the reducer function performs the necessary state transition. For our example, we can have three actions, increment, decrement, and reset. The convention to execute code based on the action is to use switch statements. So within the reducer function body, we are going to add a switch statement. The switch expression is the action. The action itself can be increment, in which case, the new state will be current state plus one. So return state plus one. Action can also be decrement, in which case the new state will be current state minus one. And finally, the action can be reset, in which case the new state will just be the initial state of zero. Return initial state. We can also have a default case for which I will simply return the current state without any changes. So this is the reducer function which is passed to the use reducer hook. Based on the action value, the function will either increment, decrement or reset the counter value. 
So that is our step two, defining the initial state and the reducer function. For the third and final step, we need to get hold of a value to display in the JSX and we also need a way to call the reducer function with the appropriate action. Now that happens to be really simple as that is exactly what useReducer returns. Similar to useState, useReducer also returns a pair of values which we can get hold of using the array destructuring syntax. So const count comma dispatch is equal to useReducer. So useReducer returns the current state which we have called as count paired with a dispatch method. This dispatch method allows us to execute the code corresponding to a particular action. In the JSX, we can now add a div tag that displays the count value. And to each of the buttons, we can add a click handler. On click is equal to an arrow function where we dispatch an action. For the increment button, we dispatch the increment action. Similarly, for decrement, we dispatch the decrement action. And for reset, we dispatch the reset action. So you can clearly see that the argument to the dispatch method is the action that is specified in the reducer function. When you dispatch increment, it adds one to the current count value. If you dispatch decrement, it subtracts one from the current count value. If you dispatch the reset action, it returns the initial value of zero. Let's save this file and include it in app.js and test it out. Counter one, and let's head to the browser. You can see that initially we have the count value set to zero. I click on increment, the value increments. Click on decrement and the value decrements. Click on reset and the value is set to zero. Our counter is working as expected. Let me go over the code one more time and explain how it all works. We start off by importing useReducer from React. After that, Within our component, we call useReducer, passing in a reducer function and the initial state. The initial state is a numeric value set to zero, which is the count value. The reducer function accepts the current state and an action and returns the new state depending on the action. If the action is increment, it returns state value plus one. If the action is decrement, it returns state value minus one, and if it is reset, it returns the initial state. Now, if at all an unknown action was specified, we don't do anything to the state variable. Back to useReducer, we can see that a call to useReducer returns a pair of values. The current value of the state, which is the count value in our example, and a dispatch method which is capable of accepting an action to execute the code specified in the render function. We use this dispatch method to dispatch the appropriate action based on what button the user clicks. The actions will trigger the state transitions. When the state changes, the component re-renders and the correct value is displayed in the browser. Now, if you're familiar with Redux, the reducer might seem a bit strange to you. State is not an object, but instead a numeric value. Action is also a straightforward string rather than an object with a type property. Or as the video title is going to tell you, this is use reducer with simple state and simple action. So you don't have to necessarily follow the Redux pattern. Having said that, you don't have to stick to this particular way of using useReducer as well. So let's take a look at another example in the next video. Thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one.